Coco is a good movie. It has a lot of creative visuals, a stunning world, great emotional moments in a vacuum, a main character you can root for, and a genuinely heart-touching conclusion. You can like Coco. I too think Coco is a good movie. It's just one of those movies that's ultimately brought down by one of the worst messages I've ever seen. <gasps> did he just say, I, he did? Look, I know I have made a lot of negative videos, and I do want to make some positive ones, but this needs to be said. Outside of one really good video that nobody has ever bothered watching, no one seems interested in bringing up this legitimately questionable and possibly dangerous message Coco has. But before we get into that, let's go over a brief summary. The movie follows a family called the Riveras, who are well renowned for making shoes, but are also known for their distaste of music, after their great abuela's husband left on a musical trip and never returned. And because of that, their hatred of music developed as time went by, and the whole town knows it. Skip to modern day, and we follow Miguel and his attempts to try and follow his passion, music, while the family tries to force him into conformity with their anti-musical ways. That basic premise isn't bad on paper. With the right writers, it could work to tell a nice, kind-hearted story of healing from generational trauma and learning to let go of the past. But this is where the first of many problems start to shine. The first problem being that, much like Miguel, we're supposed to sympathize with the family. The problem being is that we never learn anything about the family outside of No Music! <laughs> And it's not like they go in-depth with why each individual martyrs it. They only hate music because a dead guy from a hundred years ago didn't return home and a dead woman from a hundred years ago banished it. And it doesn't help that this part is played primarily for jokes, and jokes only. Seriously? How am I supposed to take this family's hatred of music seriously, in a dramatic sense, when all it wants to do is make us laugh at them? <laughs> Why am I supposed to laugh at no music? and then treat their hatred as something genuinely serious? Now, it's one thing if this was just restrained to the family, but no, they will get the whole town involved if they must. This is not a family, it's a coalition of music-hating zealots. And nowhere is this personified than in my least favorite Pixar character, period, Elena. This greasy piece of fossilized shiitake is the bane of my existence every time I watch this film. We're supposed to like her, or maybe sympathize with her like the rest of the family, but when it comes to her stern stance against music, she'll physically assault and terrorize other people. She is an active terror to her community, and somehow people still buy their product? That makes no sense. I wouldn't be critical of it if it weren't for the fact, like I said, we never learn why she herself personally hates music. What if it brought back painful memories of Coco crying about her lost father? Or maybe it brought back memories of her hearing Coco and Imelda arguing over music. Is it really too much to ask for the writers and animators to dedicate a little less time on the adventure aspect? and go a little bit deeper into the living family's ordeal? If Bluey, a kid's show, can get away with episodes dedicated to talking about premature birth and infertility, I think this multi-million dollar Pixar movie could afford going a little bit further into why the family hates music outside of because of this, Elena doesn't come off as a hard but well-meaning individual like what they probably intended. She ends up more like Burgermeister Meisterburger, a crotchety old person who enforces a strict ban on something just because of one single incident. Shifting focus to Miguel, his life is constantly controlled by Tyranno Senior Rex over here. So much so that a basic conversation about music can result in a vicious beating from her. Not to Miguel, but the person talking to him. 
As a result, Miguel must keep his passion a secret, and it does a good job at making you sympathize with him. He's just trying to be himself, but these controlling people just do their best to stand against him. I get it, Miguel is an outcast. Of course they won't stand with him. If they're a part of his family. Yeah, almost everyone likes Miguel's music. He's not like Flick where his passion tends to cause trouble. No, Miguel is only a black sheep in his music-hating family. And yet, people still like these peeps? I don't know about you, but I think there's another well-known Disney character that did something similar to his son and became quite infamous for it. We'll discuss that in a little bit. But first, we should get to the juiciest part. The big emotional fallout. So basically, the family finds out about Miguel's music obsession, and when Miguel rightfully calls them out for their shit, Elena decides that the best way to prevent her grandson from running away like his ancestor did is to just destroy his guitar right in front of him, crushing his dreams in a pretty cold-blooded moment. This not only confirms everything Miguel hates about his family, but yeah, this is in fact a form of child abuse. Sure, Elena isn't striking him or throttling him or something of the like, but this is directly targeting Miguel on a psychological and emotional level, even if it's not her intention. And it's this that causes Miguel to run away. Yeah, I know the rest of the family thought she went too far as well, but the fact that no one thought of stopping her says everything. Not even Miguel's own parents tried to stop this little piece of rock over here. And with all that's happened, I dare say Miguel is in the right for running away. But this is where I start talking about my least favorite part of this movie's message. The movie's main theme and message is about being with your family and appreciating them. So. What do they do? They try to both side the issue. They want the family to be at fault for not allowing Miguel to be himself, and they also want Miguel to be at fault for not understanding the importance of family. I'm sorry, but seriously? You've given us no reason to want to see Miguel return to these dolls. But the worst part? We're supposed to let what Elena did to Miguel slide like it was just some bog-standard overreaction a family member may have. You know, like how Marlin was overreacting when Nemo was considering going out into open water to touch the butt. Actually, that's a good comparison. Both of these are reactions a parental figure has that ends up driving the one they wanted to dissuade away, and, by proxy, kicks off the rest of the movie as a whole. The difference is that Marlin is not an asshole. Yes, he's overbearing and somewhat controlling, but his intense fears are understandable. Marlin bore witness to the death of his entire family. This trauma led him to want to protect Nemo, if a little too much. It's understandable why he would act this way, and the movie dedicates time to showing us how he's growing out of that mindset and moving on from this trauma. But it's not just Marlin growing as a person, Nemo is growing as a person. Realizing how much his father cares for him and learning to truly become more of his own man. Or fish in this case. Elena has none of that. She doesn't do this out of trauma. She's just doing this because some grandparent told her to. And I think there is a genuine difference between assuming your child is doing something dangerous and doing this. What Marlin was doing was overbearing. What Elna did was downright cold-blooded. Heck, I know at least one person out there will compare this scene to the cart-smashing scene in Wreck-It Ralph. But unlike the former, these two are not comparable. The cart scene happened right before the third act, after time was given to develop Ralph and Vanellope, in order to show us why Ralph would do this and how much of a betrayal to Vanellope this is. The guitar scene, on the other hand, happens right before the second act, never giving us any time to know anything about Elena outside of... This? 
makes us feel sad and disappointed that Ralph would do something so horrible and feel even worse for Vanellope. This just leaves me with a feeling of disgust towards the Riveras because of how willing and angrily they do something this horrible to Miguel, and how no one would step in to stop this, not even his own parents. This doesn't make me like the Riveras, not in one bit. All this does is make me feel even worse for Miguel and, to be frank, all this does is make me not want to see him return to his family. Also, this is the last time we see the family until the ending. They're just forgotten about and are never truly acknowledged until said ending. We never see how Miguel running away or Elna's decision affected the family. If they did something like with Triton, skip to him later in the movie and see how his hasty decision ended up affecting him personally, that would have worked better. But no, we don't get anything. You get nothing. Oh, but I'm not done yet. Miguel, believing he is the descendant of the great musician, Ernesto de la Cruz, decides to play his guitar and is banished to Dead Man's Wonderland as a result. So his great-grandmother decides to help him out by sending him back to the living world, only on the condition he rejects music. So you're telling me this rejected Undertale <laughs> character would rather watch her great-grandson be damned to the spirit world for all eternity than strum a guitar. Tell me, why am I supposed to like this medieval reject again? Speaking of which, let's go back to that tragic backstory. I know Hector didn't return and it soured her quite a bit, but why didn't Imelda report Hector missing? I'm pretty sure any loving or reasonable family member would do that first before assuming the worst. But given that Imelda just immediately assumes he abandoned the family, I can only assume she was not a loving wife, nor a reasonable member of the family, which... And do never play music again! ...really isn't a surprise. Also, the movie states that those who are forgotten will disappear forever. So, by proxy, they're saying Miguel will suffer a fate worse than death because he didn't appreciate his abusive family, while also saying being famous is important because it will grant you basically what is immortality. So as I was saying, I think this movie's message is terrible, not gonna lie. I actually kind of hate this aspect. I get that the final death is a metaphor for how people will always live on in our memories, but it raises so many questions that are never answered. Do only photographs and ofrendas allow people to visit their families? Was this same photo rule applied back in the time when cameras didn't exist? Are all people subject to this rule, including people from separate religions? In all honesty, I don't think this was really all that well thought out. And, let's be honest, it was probably just a way to force Miguel to see the importance of family. But, to be fair, being Thanos from existence is a good motivation to make him want to get back to the living world. So to avoid being thanos for all eternity, he goes looking for De La Cruz, his idol and his supposed great-grandfather. But as we learn, he was the reason why Hector never returned. He murdered him and stole his songs. And now knowing the truth, Miguel just wants to go home with his family. But is that really how this should go? Because, as is, this isn't Miguel realizing the importance of family. It's him being practical. Miguel is slowly dying, and his only choices are return to his dream-crushing family and live, get his blessing from a literal murderer knowing that he's only helped secure that man's false legacy, or just straight-up die. Cheese, rat poison. Cheese, rat poison. Duh. This doesn't force Miguel to reassess or reevaluate anything about himself or his priorities. 
It's just a multiple choice of which poison he should pick. Of course he'd take the least devastating one. I'm pretty sure if you put Frieza in this position, he'd make a similar choice, if anything just to get out of the afterlife. So when Miguel says, Family comes first, is hollow because the movie never works to make it feel earned. Not from his side or the family's. And don't get me started on the ending. Yes, the scene is nice in a vacuum, but even after all that has happened, Elena is still standing against him. Sure, she lets him play for Coco, but if it weren't for this previously useless father, she would have very likely done the same thing she did the night before. But this time, to a cherished cultural heirloom. I don't think I need to tell you what the ramifications of that would have been. Like I said, the scene is nice, but it highlights probably the part that irritates me the most. They never apologize to Miguel. Yeah, they never do. They don't even say so much as I'm sorry, not even Elena, the one who caused all this trouble. And since we never see the family when Miguel enters the land of Oz, we don't see what kind of growth they went through. How they may have reassessed their stance on music and Miguel. We get nothing! Even Buck Cluck said he was sorry. Which, let's talk about that. I've actually re-evaluated Buck Cluck quite a bit since my Chicken Little video. Yes, he's not a good father, but the movie is aware of this. They don't excuse him for it. They acknowledge what he is doing is bad, and they not only have him say, I am sorry, but they also have him unquestionably follow his son's lead, fight off alien soldiers, and even stand up to an alien overlord who can kill them at any moment just to protect his son. It doesn't make up for what Buck did, but it's far more palpable than anything this movie does. And even then, you can at least make excuses for him. His wife is dead, he's still probably getting over it. On top of the bad publicity his son garnered, must have put a lot of pressure on the guy. He's still a bad father, but at least he recognizes this and changes himself for the better. Heck. Even Namari, another character who caused the conflict in her story, at least tries to say she's sorry. But because this bunch never even so much as thinks of apologizing to Miguel, and we never see how they change throughout the film, letting music back doesn't feel earned nor does the emotional climax feel genuine. It feels more like they're letting it back because it served an objective purpose to them. That's Stupid. And by proxy, its ultimate resolution is unearned. And I feel like a big part of this can be attributed to not just the writing, but the adventure itself. It steals a lot of screen time away from the familial strife. Kind of like that one Disney movie. And yet no one ever seems to acknowledge this. Look, I don't think Coco's a bad movie. It has elements I like in it, and if anything, I'll probably just rewatch everything involving the Land of the Dead on all my subsequent rewatches, and just pretend the living family doesn't exist. But Coco? It just feels like a watered-down, worse-written version of Encanto. A movie with a lot of similar parallels that actually dedicates the right amount of time it needs to make its message focused, nuanced, and balanced in a way that makes its resolution feel earned. If you can enjoy this movie barring everything I just said, that's fine. More power to you. And if you think I am missing something, please make a response video to this and explain why I am wrong. I am genuinely curious. But as of right now, I just don't think this is going to be a movie that, as the years go by, people are going to talk about in the grand lineup of Pixar's greatest films. But hey, I can be good. I know how to fix this movie.
Corre, gatito. Thank you.